Channel 2, Chicago. The program normally scheduled at this time will not be presented, so we may bring you the following Channel 2 special. There is something magical, mystical about an island, a kingdom unto itself. His children, Robinson Crusoe, in Treasure Island. Maybe that's when it starts for us, this idea that islands have treasures all their own. While the very word stirs the wanderlust in us all, there's no need to wander too far for an island to explore. The Great Lakes are dotted with islands. This is one of them, Washington Island, way up in Lake Michigan. Only 622 people live here year-round. They have no shopping centers, no movie theaters, no fast food restaurants. In fact, they don't even have a stoplight here. You know what they say about this place? It's north of the line. We're going to be visiting Washington Island for a while, so uh, why not come along and, and visit with us? Washington's Island, north of the Tension Line, is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware. We've got what it takes. During fall, paint, savings, you can save on quality True Test paint at True Value Hardware Stores. Take the very best Easy Care Flat, Easy Care Flat Enamel, and Easy Care Semi-Gloss Latex Interior Paints at the season's lowest prices from just $9.98 a gallon. But hurry, True Test Fall Paint Savings Prices are good only until September 8th at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Annie, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese coming right Mr. Kraft, your macaroni and cheese has more cheese than any moves, right? Right. It tastes the cheesiest. Right. So it should be called Cheese and Macaroni. Annie, great idea. Kraft Macaroni and Cheese has more cheese any other brand. That's why it tastes the best. Annie! They might change the name, Mom. Oh? I got it straight from the top. Kraft Cheese and Macaroni. The cheesiest. Hinkley and Schmidt brings you this water glass symphony. Music as pure as the Hinkley water which tunes each note. Water free of impurities. Water in harmony with your body. If you like pure music in a clean world full of healthy people, we're playing your song. Try Hinkley and Schmidt free at your home or office. Call 229-1800. Washington Island is miles from the mainland, about seven miles. The only bridge is the ferry. Catch it at the tip of the Wisconsin mainland and then cross the waters known as Death's Door, where legend says, Many an Indian canoe went down in a storm. But today, Arnie Richter's ferry boats are not at the mercy of the Great Lakes winds. Richter's boats shuttle people, food, tractor trailers, livestock, ambulances, anything that needs to get from here to there. In summer, it's a 30-minute ride to the island, and the ferries leave morning till night. In winter, when the water is turned, there is only one boat a day, and the trip can take much, much longer. Well, there are days that we can make it in, say, uh, 40 minutes, and mm -hmm. there are other days that might take us. The extremes have been about 10 hours in getting, okay. getting one way. But today, the sun's shining brightly, and Richter's boat is weighted down with tourists. What are you going to do on Washington Island? Vacation, rest, fish. In that order? Or? Meet friends, uh -huh. whatever order they come in. Yeah. The ferry lands at Detroit Harbor, Washington Island. Only a seven mile trip, but when you're up here, north of the line, you'll find life moves at a different speed. The longest distance you have to drive to get anywhere is about eight miles. Most of the business area is along Main Road. There's Man's General Store. You see a couple of service stations, a little bookstore, the bank, Several restaurants, including a drive-in, but you wouldn't call it fast food. For fast, go to Chicago, they say. 
Before we go any farther, I suppose we should tell you where Washington Island is. Let's take a look at our map. Chicago, way down here. And all the way up here, 300 miles or so north, at the tip of the Door County Peninsula in Wisconsin, is tiny Washington Island. You'll find several marinas on the island, three churches. Bethel was built in 1865. There are several hotels and motels. But the inn here came along before the chain of the same name. The community center houses the library and medical center. There's a permanent doctor and a part-time dentist. <laughs> Dr. Tom Wilson comes three days a week in summer, one day a week in winter. Is that sensitive? Okay. If there's an emergency, the okay. ferry's always there. Um, I think people probably get pretty, pretty uh, quick responses to their problems up here, probably, maybe more so than in the city. Mm -hmm. Jens, what do you think about going to the dentist? I hate it. <laughs> Everybody hates going to the dentist. Well, the, ortho the orthodontist said, the dentist, yuck. <laughs> the dentist Thanks, uh, Jens. The dentist hurts. But huh? the dentist would come. And he Herman would Lucky can share a certain sympathy with that young man. She remembers sitting in the island's dental first chair. dental chair. In fact, I think I had a tooth pull sitting in that chair when you I did? was just a kid, yes. Did you really? <laughs> yes. Did they hate it? Well, I don't think they had too much of anything. No, it hurt terribly. As I know it got infected, and I had a terrible time with it that I can remember. That's awful. Yeah, that so. chair is just one of the items in the Jacobson Museum, where Carmen Lucky is curator. Of course, these are all fossils that Mr. Jacobson had collected. Uh -huh. Easier collecting than it is now, but they are some. As it's a small fossils. island, it's a small museum, Pleasure. but it's crammed full of things that have meant something to the island's past. This is the old switchboard that was used here until 1968. How old it is, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. But of course, you get 15 people on the line. It was just like having a secretary. Now this is the first pinball machine on the island? Yes, uh-huh. You can see by the pins. Uh -huh. well, it was called a pinball machine uh -huh. and it had 10 balls for a nickel. It's been a good long time ago since that was used. Here's an old pair of skis. It says made by Walter Lucky. Is that any re relation? That was my husband. They were skis that he had made. That's one of the first things that was done for you when you moved to the island here. Mm -hmm. I came here, I was married at 16 and came here, and that's the first thing my husband did for me was make me a pair of skis. Oh. This is one of the things we're quite proud of. This is a beaded garment made by Algonquin Indians, gotten up here oh, through about 250 years old. Carmen showed us some artifacts from the first islanders, the Indians. But, but the in the 19th century, Indians. others came to live here. The Yankees first, New Yorkers mostly, then the Irish, the Germans, and the Scandinavians. In 1870, the island became the first permanent Icelandic in the United States. The islanders made their living with farming and fishing. It's mid-afternoon now, and Jacob Ellison is bringing in his catch on the Miss Judy. Our father was a fisherman. So we became fishermen so we could have a beautiful island. Jacobs is a two-man operation, out at dawn six days a week, back into Jackson Harbor in time to get the fish on the four o'clock ferry. Today, the catch is chubs. Other days, whitefish. Now those get taken where? Down? You go primarily to the Chicago wholesale market where they're smoked and then sold retail. For decades, Jackson Harbor has been the home port of island fishermen, up to 40 at one time. Signs of that heritage are still around. The fishermen are not. For one reason or another, but primarily because we caught too many fish. Overproduction, no price. We gradually dwindled away, and now there's only five or six of us left. Most of the old ways of making a living here have faded from island life. Not just the commercial fishing, but the farming, cherry orchards, dairy cattle. Today, the island's industry is tourism. Gift shops, moped rentals, bicycle rentals. The omnipresent cherry trains give visitors a taste of island life in an hour and 45 minutes. With the tourists and the people who have summer homes, the island's population grows in summer from 600 to 2 or 3,000. What do you like best about Washington Island? Peace, serenity, away from all the traffic. 
calmness. Here there is escape from the hustle and hassle of the city. In 1863, wrote of how Dame Nature has lavished upon us her richest blessings with everything to please the eye and gladden the hearts of all. After more than a hundred years, the island still pleases the eye. Today, Lorna Cornell brought her art class to the island's southern shore. What about the artistic community? Is there a decent-sized artistic community up there? Well, I think the people up here sort of uh, have it built in. So it's very easy. They're, they're inspired in the first place. So all they have to do is learn the technique. And then they, they go with it. Lorna is a former Chicagoan. She's one of many imports from the city. Andy Maneo used to be a mason contractor in Mount Prospect. Now he and his wife, Bonnie, run the shipyard marina. Nobody really is in a hurry to get here or there. When we lived in the the availability of everything made you run here and about and, uh, you know, shopping and, and here there isn't that much of that. Conan Eaton and his wife moved here from Milwaukee 35 years ago. Don't have to lock your car here, he says. No, never, never do that. Because in the first place, if we came out and found the car missing, your first thing would be to call the ferry dock, I suppose, and say, look, this is, me, this is I, uh, or me. <laughs> My car is missing. Uh -huh. You know what it looks like. Don't let it get off the island. And that would be the end of that. On this day, there's big goings on at the ferry dock. The island school has some visitors coming. A bus full of kids from Arneveld, Wisconsin. And out at the airport, a couple of plane loads of high schoolers are flying in from Beaver Island off the coast of Michigan. All right, Kevin. <laughs> Three very small schools getting together for some mixing and mingling. Call it a cultural exchange, says Washington Island principal Jim Kenyon. When these kids go off to someplace else, they don't just automatically start mixing it up. Uh, they cluster, uh, and uh, there's, there's, there's strength in unity. And they just kind of stay together, and they don't go out there and shake hands and, gee, glad to know you and where you've been all my life. There probably were as many teenagers gathered here as Washington Island had seen in a while. Last year's senior class had only four students in it, three girls, one You know everyone, everything about everybody, <laughs> which is okay sometimes and not okay other times. The kids from Beaver Island were finding some interesting similarities. Things like, I mean, just little trivial things like waving to people on the road. Everyone knows each other by name. That's, yeah, everybody's related to everybody. One of the grown-ups said it's like close encounters of the third kind when island kids meet kids from other places. But after a full weekend of general teenage goings-on, they were ready to try the whole thing again next year. First home game here. We got to look good. In summer, the kids work hard and play hard. The Island Little League team has a full schedule on Friday nights. Tonight, it's the Island versus Sister Bay. The Island team is co-ed. One of the reasons I have a lot of girls on the team is because not all the classes have a lot of boys, so I just take anybody. You know? Washington Island we needs women. And they're good. And <laughs> is it, I mean, we've been talking to all the adults up here about what it's like to live in the island and all that kind of stuff. What, from a kid's point of view, what's it, what's it like to live in the island? Great. It's boring. Great. It's great. Great. It's boring. It's awesome. Do you plan to stay here? You're going to live here all the time? I mean, no. no. <laughs> uh, this guy yeah. wants to stay in the island. Why do you want to stay here? Um, it's not as busy as in the cities, and it's pretty fun up here. It's different than most places. What do you want to be doing in say ten years? <laughs> ten years? No idea. I, I haven't thought that far ahead. You think you'll still be living here on the island? No, Why definitely not? not. Why not? No money. Money has something to do with it. Mm. You're never going to get rich on this. You can live, you can exist if you're conservative, mm -hmm. but you're never going to make a mint of money on this island. If you want to make money, you got to go somewhere else. Sylvia Nelson knows about that youthful urge to see the world. She left the island to go to school, came back, saw her son do the same thing. He said, don't ever expect to be rich. I'd like to be happy. I'm moving back to the island. We asked Sylvia if she ever felt isolated here. 
No, she said, she's got her flower boxes, reeds, and has a multitude of friends. A week ago, Saturday, I had 20 people in and out. I thought, I'm just gonna write down who came to see And I wrote the names down. And then someone rapped on the door, and it was 8.30 at night, and another set of neighbors walked in. If you're bored, it's your own fault. We have to be creative up here because there isn't a movie theater, there isn't um, disco or whatever. So we do a lot of music, um, a lot of uh, game hunting, a lot of card playing, and together times. Julian Hagen's an island boy who left and came back. On a Thursday night, you can find him singing his songs at the Lighthouse Restaurant. Inside and out, the love spreading about, I found love. Up here, um, you just have to walk outside and look up, and there's stars, a million stars, and uh, it's like a little spirit comes down and taps you on the shoulder, and they come pretty easy a lot of times. This is my father, as if you don't know, right? It's a pretty informal evening, and friends and relatives join in. Keep it up, I love it. Captain Jack Hagen runs a charter fishing boat, and he came here straight from the dock. is one of those together times Julian was talking about. One of Julian's songs has turned into an island anthem of sorts. Because we'll never have this time to live If you can see the difference between this and this, smile, because Gleam can make the same difference in your teeth. You see, only Gleam has calcium P, and laboratory tests prove it gets stained teeth whiter than any leading fluoride brand, whiter than any gel, whiter than any polish. How much whiter? 30%. And you'll still get Gleam's proven fluoride protection. So if your teeth aren't as white as they can be, start brushing with Gleam. You'll be smiling, pretty. What goes into a successful painting job? More than a great can of paint. It takes the right equipment from True Value Hardware Stores. The Wagner Power Stripper is not here to lift paint so you can remove it easily. And the one half horsepower Campbell Hausfeld Power Pal is the air compressor with accessories. This rich six foot wood step ladder has a place for paint and tools. And the Easy Painter three piece painting set is perfect for inside jobs. You'll do better with help from participating True Value Hardware Stores. Don't you just hate to be without your glasses? Never again. At Precision Lens Crafters, we custom grind glasses in about an hour, even bifocals. Listen. I stepped in my glasses, they were shattered, and they were completely useless to me. So I came here, they were able to fit me up with a new pair of glasses I was in and out in an hour. You get your glasses within an hour. I bought glasses, and they were both done in less than an hour. Eyeglasses in about an hour. Precision Lens Crafters, six locations. Call 691-2100 for the location near you. The island was named for a ship, which was named for a president. The sailing vessel Washington dropped anchor here back in 1816. More than 150 years later, a small plane sees the island as no one on those ships ever dreamed. Pilots like to point to the wreck of the Louisiana, sunk in a storm in 1913. This is a busy day at the Washington Island Airport, the day of the lion annual fly-in fish boy. They claim, and no one's disputing, that during the fly-in, the airport here is busier than Chicago's O'Hare. Just, uh, just a weekend away, and the fish is good. Ah, yes, the fish. The fish boil is something they do up here in Door County. By fishermen, the story goes, tired of a cold lunch every day. Take Lake Michigan whitefish, add a layer of onions and potatoes, 
put it all in a big black kettle. One more minute, Okie. Timing is everything. At least that's what the timer says. How do you keep track of all that? Kettle's going it's in. not easy. That's why they get the most intelligent person uh, in the area for this. <laughs> well, when the time is right, they put a little diesel fuel on the fire. Fire four. As the water boils over, all the fish oils are supposed to leave the concoction. And then it's time. How about the, how about the Beautiful. Yeah. Who needs them? Well, here's the official fish boil recipe, but I especially like the last few steps. So step 11 is dump a can of kerosene on the fire to make it boil over and watch this spectacular operation and take pictures. Pour out the ingredients, everybody eats, everybody likes, visit and watch the plant. Everybody comes back next year, yay! I'll go along with that. The only thing to compare to all those planes coming in during the fly-in is all those sport fishing boats in the waters during salmon season. Lake Michigan salmon spend their summers up in these waters, and so do an awful lot of sport fishermen. Rob Carr is always mighty glad to see those fishermen. He's one of the charter boat captains who takes them out. What are we after, kings? Well, they call them kings, they call them Chinook. Coho, they call them Chinook, rather. Yeah. They call them ugly, they call them mean, they call them hungry. <laughs> like a lot of islanders, Rob's a jack of all He's a banker, has driven a school bus part-time, cuts and sells firewood in the winter. On the island, uh, a lot of people will have more than one job, but, the, uh, but finding a good job on Washington Island is a real difficult thing to, to deal with. And uh, there's a lot of service businesses, as, as this one is, mm -hmm. but in professional opportunity, the, the, there is no industry per se other than tourism. You got it, Bob? Yeah, he's, he's, he's going. He's going. <laughs> We were coming up to Denny's Bluff when the fish started to bite. There he is. Hang on to him, Bob. <laughs> You're Run doing it. a good job. You're doing He's a good job. Again. Got him. Yes, sir. Smoke him and eat him, and the experience will be complete. Good, sir. You did a good job, Robert. OK. Of course, a pretty sunset always helps, too. Sunset's a beautiful time to be fishing. North of the tension line, people take their time with things. It takes time to weave a tapestry. Somehow the island seems a natural place to find a school for weaving, quilting, basket making, and spinning. I thought it would be wonderful to weave for a week and spend it on an island. It's called the School of Fiber Arts. Students come from across the country. What makes you want to come up here and do these things? What is there about this island that attracts you? This island is the loveliest place in the world. Really? Really. really. Would all of this worked as well anywhere else but Washington Island? Um, it may, but I doubt it. The man who started the school is Walter Schutz. He first visited the island in 1922. Nowadays, he hardly leaves. I wouldn't leave this place. I was off the island uh, last year for about four hours, and prior to that, I think it was about three and a half years since I've been off the island. Uh, you like a thing like this, and in turn, you simply see it, and that's all I was doing. Walter says there's a kind of magic about the island. You could start to believe in the magic. Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone. We were just sitting on the hotel porch one evening when a wedding started to happen in front of us. Will you love her, comfort her, honor her? They eloped here from Racine. He's a chimney sweep and wore his work clothes. She picked up a dress at an antique clothing store. What therefore God hath joined together. The preacher was from Bethel Church. The witnesses were locals. The photographer, well, she just happened to be passing by and got swept up into the occasion. And forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him so long as ye both shall live. Do you think the island's kind of romantic? Yeah, sure. Couldn't have picked a better place to get married. Maybe there is no more place to get married than an island. You'll know what the kids should put on when you put on WBBMAM. All news, all the time. When the political smoke clears, you'll hear the inside.
and WBBM AM. All news, all the time. You'll hear the latest sports without missing a stroke on WBBM AM. All news, all the time. We'll keep you in touch. In touch with Chicago. What goes into a successful painting job? More than a great can of paint, it takes the right equipment from True Value Hardware Stores. Turn your power drill into a power sander with a 3M clean and strip brush. Or hook up the 3M disc sander kit with a pad and sanding discs for just $3.99. Then apply protection with deft clear wood finish for only $4.88 a quart. Or Duro Extend Rust Treatment. An 8-ounce bottle is just $2.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Washington's North of the Tension Line was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware. We've got what it takes. The same things that are the charms of Washington Island are viewed by some as its shortcomings. One man's peace and quiet is another man's isolation. And in the winter, it is very quiet, with the tourists gone and most businesses closed. You don't come here expecting to eat. The dawn stayed open last winter, but sometimes there is no place open. And I came home from the store one day, and my husband and two of our friends, one of our very dear artist friends, were sitting at the table, and they said, we couldn't get anything to eat, so we came over here for lunch. <laughs> Most people you talk to, when they come over here, they'll say, God, I'm never coming back here again. There's nothing here. And, and then you talk to somebody else, and the they're just looking for the same day they come here. So I think it's a, you either like it or you don't like it. You know, it means being on an island. Being on an island, it is not the life for everyone. But that's fine with the islanders. One man said, all you have to do is look up at the clear blue skies. Live here. It's a place, they say, where people will do you a favor if you need it. Where if somebody gets married, everybody gets invited to the wedding dance. For my part, I love to pick berries. I love to swim, and I've hiked all the beaches on the island and all the roads. Mm -hmm. And of course, things there aren't to do. Like in, I imagine, many local communities, we help each other if, whenever it's necessary. There's a trust among the, the people. To me, it's home, and it always has been. And all of the people are just like your own family. that islands have treasures all their own. This island, they say, has its shape.